I'm Steve Samuelson with the Kansas Department of Agriculture's Division of Water Resources. I teach classes to community officials about floodplain management and about the elevation certificate. And I use this little toy model to help demonstrate aspects of the elevation certificate. And so one of the biggest problems we have with elevation certificates is that surveyors use the incorrect building diagram. So let's run through some building diagrams using this as a demonstration. So here we have our house in the floodplain. It sits on a hill. Here's our flood source over here. I'm going to flip it around like this and I'm going to show you the, how the different building diagrams on the elevation certificate work. So the building diagrams are important because I had somebody whose building diagram was wrong on the elevation certificate. By correcting it, we were able to save him 90% on his insurance. And by doing that, we became that guy's hero that day. And I hope you'll learn to be heroes in class. So the first building diagram in section A7 of the form is building diagram 1A. It's a slab on grade house. So let me kind of show you what that looks like. I'm going to fill in this hole in the hill with fill material, dirt essentially. So now we have a hill. And on the top of the hill, so you have level ground on top of this hill. You pour a slab on top of it, and then you build your house on top of that slab. It's a slab on grade home. So building diagram 1A is a slab on grade home, just something like that. Building diagram 1B is very similar, except that this, instead of being a slab, is a set of walls that's been poured, a stem wall. You fill on the inside of that with fill dirt or other type of material, then you pour your slab on top of that. So you've created what's a, essentially a raised slab. And then now you have this raised slab and you build your house on top of it. That's building diagram 1B. From the road, building diagram 1B looks a little bit like a crawl space with no vents in it. And they have different levels of building diagram 1B. I've seen a building diagram 1B that wasn't much more than a foot high, and I've seen them that were three foot high. The three foot high ones are usually used for things like warehouse truck loading docks so that the warehouse loading dock and the tailgate of the semi truck are at the same level. So with building diagram 2A, it's essentially below ground on all four sides. That's what leads me to identify it as a basement. That's what we all call a basement around here anyway. So building diagram 2A has, has a basement that's below ground on all four sides. It's usually a full story, but it doesn't have to be. And then the top of the bottom floor would be here. Top of the next higher floor is there. Building diagram 2B is what we call a walkout basement in the state of Kansas. And what that would essentially look like is the hill isn't cut away here. The hill is actually, this is all open and there's a door leading outside on this edge. That's the essential identifying walkout basement. So with a walkout basement, you have a hill on, usually on three sides, sometimes two sides, and then one side is open with a door leading outside. That's what it usually looks like. I had one in a beauty parlor that was like three quarters of the way covered up with a door leading outside. You get different things, but that's what it is. Building diagrams three and four are very similar to building diagrams one and two, except they're for split levels. I can't really make a split level with this little toy house. But building diagram three is your split level that's at or above grade. Building diagram four is your split level that has below grade parts, just like the building diagram two basement. So that it's a split level with a basement or it's a split level that's above grade. That's the difference. Building diagram five looks a little like this. Building diagram five is elevated on piers, posts, or columns. This is how your contractor does it at home, right? Building diagram five, pretty easy. You've all seen those movies of those houses in uh, North Carolina on the beach where people go for vacations and they're elevated like 10, 20 feet in the air. I'm a guy from Kansas, we see them right here in Kansas. They'll be elevated between three and four feet off the ground. 
be surprised how many of these there are in Kansas. People tell me they don't exist, but I find them out there all the time. Okay, building diagram six is very similar to building diagram five, except that you have an enclosed area on the inside. You have a small enclosed area on the inside of your building diagram. And that small enclosed area is usually used for access to the building. Might have stairway in it or a small storage area. Something I tell my floodplain managers to look for is flood vents in that enclosed area. So imagine that this part here is like a small room on the inside underneath the house, but you still have all of the posts really supporting the dwelling. That's building diagram six. All right, building diagram seven is elevated on full story crawl space. And so a full story crawl space, it looks kind of like the slab on grade deal, except that this area here should be used for storage, parking, access to the building. In Kansas, what I commonly see is houses that are built like this, and they park the car right here where I'm placing my hand. That's building diagram seven. Building diagram eight, is also a crawl space in an area that's enclosed before, below the, this lowest floor area here. However, in building diagram eight, it's not a full story. So building diagram eight looks a little bit like this. So here we have a crawl space area that's not a full story high. And then you have this area up here on top where the people live. And as it works out with my little toy house, I even have flood openings on the sides in just the right place. Those don't move, so that doesn't always work out with my demonstration, so I want to point it out at this time. So this is building diagram eight. Building diagram nine is similar to building diagram eight. It's a crawl space that's not a full story high, and it has special requirements for building diagram nine. Building diagram nine cannot be more than five feet from here to here. And building diagram nine can't be more than two feet below the grade from here down to the bottom of the flooring. So with two feet below grade, not more than five feet to the next higher floor. There's a FEMA technical bulletin that says from here to the bottom of this member should be four feet when you're standing up inside of it. We're just gonna assume floor joists are always gonna be 12 inches thick with the decking on top for those two to match up. And again, you have flood openings on either side. So that's building diagram nine. It's a below grade crawl space, but it's not a full story tall. And if you have questions about that, read the instructions for the elevation certificate. Everything I told you now, I learned myself by reading the instructions for the elevation certificates. And I'm the son of a guy who never read the instructions when he built my bicycle at Christmas. So I learned how to do that. All right, so that's building diagram nine. So we've kind of run through all the building diagrams, and that's important because I can't tell you how many times I've seen a policy misrated and somebody's insurance was a lot more expensive because an incorrect building diagram was used. Now, section B of the elevation certificate deals pretty much with uh, map information, and I don't have any maps here, but continuing to use this model in section C, we can talk about section C2 on the elevation certificate and where you would find the top of the bottom floor, the next higher floor, and so on. So for top of the bottom floor, it's going to be right here. Now, that's not always your rating floor, but that's the top of the bottom floor. The top of the next higher floor when you have a two-story house, for example, it's right up there. Now, lowest elevation of machinery and equipment. Sometimes you'll have a heat pump outside, but in this case, lowest elevation of machinery and equipment, let's say you have a furnace hot water heater inside of here. It'd be right down there. With the basement diagrams that I've shown you, in, that's where I often see the furnace on the pre-firm houses. The furnace is down in the basement. Okay, base flood elevation, that could be anywhere. If this is your base flood elevation, we're going to hope this is a pre-firm house. Now, base flood elevation, we'll let the surveyors calculate that. It's important to know about base flood elevation because you can compare, compare base flood elevation to lowest adjacent grade and highest adjacent grade. And how does that work? Highest adjacent grade, 
uh, highest adjacent grade is going to be up here at the highest point where the, where the grade is touching the home. So that's your highest adjacent grade right there. Lowest adjacent grade is the lowest point where the dirt's touching the house, which is going to be down there. So that concludes section, subsection C2 of the elevation certificate and elevation information. And by showing you this, I hope it's brought home some simple ways to recognize parts of the elevation certificate. If you learn how to review and identify problems on an elevation certificate, you will help your citizens and your clients save money. And I'm Steve Samuelson with the Kansas Department of Agriculture.